this video is about the US sports betting investment opportunity. First of all, in general, gambling has been a terrible, terrible business to invest in. It is pretty obvious why this has occurred. First of all, gambling has generally been considered as a net negative for society. I mean, one could argue that it's a tax on the poor and less educated people. It's not like Harvard MBAs are the ones losing their net worth in gambling. In addition to this, the market is heavily regulated, which means that due to this general hate against the industry, governments tend to tax gambling very, very heavily. On top of that, mature markets like Europe are being increasingly regulated and taxed. This is why many companies like William Hill or 888 appear to be trading cheap fundamentally, while they have a serious risk of being value traps. If you just take what happened last year in the UK, these companies were heavily hit by a new regulation that reduced the amount you could gamble at once uh, in the retail locations, a limitation that constituted a, a considerable revenue hit across all the companies in the industry. The growth in the sector is coming from basically online versus retail machines and developed markets where the regulation is not such a big headwind as in the mature ones. So hey, if this is such a bad, terrible industry, why am I talking about it in the first place? Well, the thing is, this whole multi-billion industry has been largely illegal in the US, excluding Nevada, casinos, and offshore players. However, this US regulation called PASPA was repealed in 2018. Actually, this story was pretty curious. A friend of the governor of New Jersey was arrested for racketeering because he had made an informal bet with his friends. And this incident pushed the New Jersey governor to go against PASPA, which ended up being repealed last year. Since this ball got rolling, New Jersey has been followed by Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and many others. Actually, the pace of regulation, far from slowing, is accelerating, as many states view gaming as a great way to attract tax dollars, as well as, as, well as fearing that other people are traveling to adjacent states in order to bet. I mean, people are literally crossing a bridge in New York in order to be able to place a bet. A bill regulating sports betting has already been passed for the 20% of, of the US population. And actually, it is already live in New Jersey. That's like 2% of the US population. This has been so since December. And Pennsylvania came in online uh, this June. These are the first steps of a multi, multi billion market that is opening up in the US. Actually, bills already have been passed for. 10x uh, New Jersey's gambling revenue. And uh, I think this industry will grow for many, many years. In fact, the setup is a pretty good one from an investing point of view. Due to the history in the US, there are not that many American companies that can take advantage of this change. I mean, of course, you can buy El Dorado Resort or the Stars Group, but the revenue jump will not be meaningful. I mean, you are not going to do a 10x in Stars Group because sports betting has been allowed. Equally, people from outside the US are probably not fully conscious about the size of the opportunity and probably are not giving enough credit to gaming companies. So this sounds like there could be some opportunity in this sector. To give a little context, the gaming sports betting sector consists mainly of three main type of companies. B2C, B2B, and lead generators. B2C companies operate the sportsbook, like William Hill, 888, or Flutter Entertainment. They are the logo that the customer sees. These are mostly UK companies that are very heavily regulated in Europe. They see the US as the great growth opportunity to compensate for the shrinking European market. B2B companies, uh, on the other hand, do the coding, the programming uh, behind the B2C brands so they can enjoy the cost synergies among the clients. 
these are companies like Playtech, IGT, uh, Cambi, and NetEnt. These companies work with revenue share agreements with B2C companies, and at scale, they can get to 50% ABDA margins. Lastly, lead generators like Excel Media and other companies are basically advertising companies that attract leads to the operators through publishing sites or programmatic advertising. These are the main players on in this industry. There are other companies influenced too. For example, gambling regulation is different in each state. So in some of them, you may even have to physically go to the local casino in order to place a bet. In addition, sports would require an approved license in each state. So players like Boyd, MGM, or Eldorado Resorts do have a say on this industry. Additionally, in the US, an additional player exists. The DFS companies, the daily fantasy sports companies. Those are essentially FanDuel and DraftKings. Fantasy sports apps allow the player to create a given sports team with players and play against other people. Until recently, in-app contests have been the sole revenue stream for these companies, but now they are expanding to sports betting. After years of fierce competition, actually they had more advertising dollars than revenue for many years, the market has consolidated around DraftKings and FanDuel with a combined 90% market share. Actually, both companies tried to merge in 2017, but it was denied by the FTC due to monopoly risk. So, due to their history, they hold significant brand value among consumers. And even they have a great positioning in the App Store, which will be a growing pain for many new betting apps. Equally, due to their dominant position, some states are passing explicit limitations for DFS companies as far as sports betting is concerned. After years of burning cash in advertising, they seem to have fallen just in the right place for sports betting legalization. It is important to note that DraftKings is private, but is powered by Cambi, a B2B software company, while FanDuel was recently acquired by Flutter Entertainment, the former Betfair. So, as mentioned, generally every gambling company is partnering with the US casinos. Like one side has the technology and the other has the licenses. So, DraftKings is partnering with Cambi Eldorado, with William Hill, and many others. So, the thing is, the first months of results in New Jersey are already out, and they indicate that both DFS companies have successfully transitioned to sport betting as they have achieved a combined share of 70% of the market. Although new entrants will reduce this dominant position, DFS companies are a step ahead of other companies due to the years of brand equity build. So the investment landscape is so that you have B2C companies like William Hill, 888 and others that are essentially two speed companies, Europe being a decreasing business while the US is their new hope. B2B companies are in a similar position, although there is a more diverse ecosystem of software providers to the industry. Each of them has a take rate on the revenue of the B2C companies, but the services they provide are wildly different. Lead generators have generally good returns on capital, but they face a real risk of being limited by Facebook or Google. Other types of businesses like casino management software, media, or casinos even, won't be so positively affected by the change in the industry. Given this environment, the ideal US sports betting play should be a pure play US facing company that lacks the burden of already mature markets. The company that I believe will take advantage of this opportunity is GAM PLC. GAN is part of the B2B sector in the gaming industry and it defines itself as an enterprise gaming software. After the IPO in 2013 at 135p, GAN has been struggling to survive since it is a primarily US-focused B2C company in the gaming industry. The company has developed virtual gaming software for casinos, 
a software that does not earn a comparable revenue to real money gaming programs. I mean, virtual money gambling is basically a workaround on the online gaming regulation so that casinos can offer a quasi-online gaming service without being legalized. GAN has been surviving on this low-revenue product since it went public. However, during these years, GAN has laid the ground for the passing of the gaming regulation as virtual money gaming solutions are often followed by real money gambling software once regulation is put in place. In addition, in 2014, GAN filed a patent for account management technology related to loyalty reward programs in casinos. GAN developed a way to link offline gaming loyalty points to online loyalty programs. This is believed to be a very relevant aspect for casinos as they want the user to come back to their online apps and loyalty programs are a great way to achieve this. GAN's business model can be different depending on the service they provide to the customer. GAN is the current account management software for FanDuel and they have a multi-year, five-year contract with them where it receives around 5% of the revenues. In the case of casinos, GAN is currently Parks Casino's software provider and it provides a turnkey software as a service solution where it integrates a third-party sportsbook software like Canby with its own software platform with account management, credit card processing, analytics, marketing, and many others. This type of service has a take rate of around 10% as it constitutes a full enterprise online gambling software for casinos. The company has grown revenues 122% in the first quarter in 2019 due to the New Jersey gaming ramp up, due to FanDuel's success actually. With Pennsylvania being online in July, the company is expected to have revenues around 20 million pounds and a 100% growth for the year. The company has 8.6 million in cash after the last capital raise and generates cash while growing. Actually, working capital dynamics are pretty good as casinos may pay in advance for a service. In addition, GAN has NOLs and they are valued around £5 million. The company is led by Dermot Smurfit, nephew of Michael Smurfit, former CEO of Smurfit Kappa, Ireland's biggest company, and is the founder of the company and owner of around 13% of the shares. The rest of the management and the Smurfit family owns around 36% of the shares. The company is underfollowed due to its liquidity, its market cap is below 60 million pounds, and the lack of general understanding of their software. Although sportsbook companies are widely recognized, an ERP type of software in the gambling industry is harder to find. This makes GAN work in a much less competed area of the industry. Given FanDuel's competitive position and the service GAN provides to casinos like Parks, GAN is one of the best ways to play the rapidly rising industry of online sports betting in the US. Although the market does not usually confer a lofty multiple to these kind of gambling companies, adjacent businesses with similar growth profiles like PointsBet Holdings in Australia are trading above 10 times revenues, which indicates the upside on the GAN investment. However, obviously, the company faces several risks. The first and most important one is the reliance on FanDuel and the fact that the contract ends in 2024. If FanDuel decides to end the contract or just stop working with GAN, that would be a severe hit. In addition, the history of Operating losses and capital rises raises doubts around the capacity to execute of the business. And finally, the company's functions could be bypassed um, and their patent violated by other bigger, wealthier players. Although these risks pose a real threat to the rollout of the company's software, at around two times this year's revenue, ex cash, ex NOLs, and 100% revenue growth. GAN constitutes a very compelling opportunity to play the rapid growth of the sports wedding industry in the following years.